Hi, I'm Sophie Hawkins and I'm a Hesh Method practitioner and today I'm going to be interviewing Jerry Hesh to ask him some questions that are often asked uh, by my clients and uh, also some questions that I personally have for him. So by way of introduction, I'd just like to read his bio right from the website so I don't miss anything. So um, for over 35 years, and in fact I think it's closer to 40 now, uh, Dr. Jerry Hesh of the Hesh Institute has treated individuals suffering from acute and chronic pain from hypomobility and hypermobility instability from sacroiliac joint dysfunction and dysfunction in joints throughout the body. Over the course of his career, Dr. Jerry Hesh has developed a whole body approach to evaluation and treatment of connective tissues and joint dysfunction known as the Hesh method. Um, he's published and taught courses on evaluation and treatment, which he's developed on every joint of the body, including the foot, ankle, knee, hip, and pelvic girdle, low back, upper back and ribs, neck, shoulder, upper extremities, and TMJ. The goal of the Hesh method is to provide an alternative to ineffective long-term treatment commonly referred to as the treatment roller coaster. The Hesh Institute in Aurora, Colorado near Denver improves the quality of life for pain sufferers from all over the world. And I have to attest uh, myself that I have been helped uh, with the Hesh method. Uh, I was in some chronic pain when I was um, in my 40s, uh, getting close to 50, and uh, have been able to keep myself pain free and working as a massage therapist using the Hesh method. And I have uh, been able to help many, many clients over the over 10 years now that I've been practicing uh, to to get out of chronic pain and live a more pain-free life. So here's the interview. I hope you enjoy it. Um, so it would be really helpful for a lot of my clients if you could explain the HESH method how you would. I know how I explain it, but how you would explain it in layperson's terms and in a very simple way. Yeah. So I, I think what I'll do is, is discuss how I developed it when I was a teenager. Okay. I, was, um, I was a state wrestling champion. I also was in a severe motorcycle wreck, had a very active childhood, fell out of trees, you know, you know the drill, bike yeah. wrecks. Anyway, um, so I had pain between my shoulder blade and I was seeing a healthcare practitioner. I'm not going to name the type. Um, and I told him, well, I still hurt between my shoulder blades. And he was very dismissive stating that he had already treated that. And I'm thinking, so you think your treatment worked, but it didn't. I feel the pain. You don't feel the pain. And is that all you have? I mean, I was really disappointed, but it gave me a window into the personalities of some controlling healthcare practitioners. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to go into the healthcare field, but I didn't want to treat people that way. I wanted to be smart enough to know when to send my clients to someone else. And I do live that. Yeah. But anyway, <clears throat> um, I had also seen other practitioners and no one was really solving it. So I thought, well, I'm going to see what I can do. So I got a, I got a ball about two and a half, maybe three inch diameter. And I laid on the floor. I just did this intuitively. So I laid on the floor and I put it in that painful area. But I moved around to find the sweet spot where I felt like it was very therapeutic. Mm -hmm. And I laid on it and I experimented and found that sweet angle to position my body in where it felt like it was easing the discomfort and restoring motion there. And I must have stayed on it for more than three minutes, I think maybe five, and it fixed my problem. And I have a body type that's rather stiff by design, makes for good wrestlers, but not for good motorcycle wrecks or bike wrecks or whatever, mm -hmm. because my connective tissue is too dense. It has less elasticity. Yeah, I so felt people that. like me, 
we don't respond to say a joint adjustment that doesn't restore the normal motion in my joint. It takes time. So out of that experience, I came up with four main principles of treatment. And number one is use a fulcrum. And the ball was a fulcrum. It creates an external force, a lever, with which to kind of get a little opening and encourage a glide. So number one, use a fulcrum. And it can be your hands or it can be a ball, piece of foam, etc. Number two, you have to find the correct direction. Well, I didn't understand joint. Uh, I didn't know the joint anatomy of the rib joint where it forms a joint with the um, parts, two parts of the vertebrae, uh, but I was still able to treat it effectively. Well, now I know the joint angles, and so I can more better approximate the correct angle. But anyway, the second principle was, was uh, correct angle of force. Number three, the force needs to be gentle, okay? If you pull my tongue for two minutes, I mean, I'm going to be rather intimidated, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were to tug on it ever so gently and with some purpose, and I was like, oh, okay, I know why you're doing this, then I would tolerate that better. Okay. You know? So with treatment, I learned use a small mm -hmm. force that doesn't intimidate the body. The body then relaxes into it and embraces the correction. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, what we have now is one is to use a fulcrum. Number two is a correct direction of force application. And that's based on the shape of the joint and the interaction of all the muscles with that injury. Um, and then the force needs to be gentle. And then lastly, it needs to be for a long time. And long time means two minutes. And for some corrections, I do five or 10 minutes. But most of the time, two or three minutes is sufficient. So that's how I developed it. And I learned that with external injuries from a force being imparted to your body or a fall or mm -hmm. picking up something that's too heavy, if your body can't dissipate the stress, then it gets injured. Okay. And the way the body responds is by a, a loss of micro motion little motions that can only be tested with a specific way of testing it so if i were to test a micro motion in my in my finger uh, um i would grab the finger and move it in a specific direction until motion stopped so i'm pulling my finger towards me and now it stops moving. Mm -hmm. So I've taken the slack out of all the connective tissues in the joint, and now I give it a little tiny thrust or a little tiny pull, and I feel that little motion, and I feel it spring back. And that is the testing that I use. Mm -hmm. Now, when you first developed this, Jerry, were you already working uh, when you had that injury and used the ball? Did you have any background in body work yeah. at that? Oh, no, no, okay. none at all. I was 16. You, you were just uh, intuitively smart enough to figure that out. Yeah. And, and I went, you know, I did go on and have some additional severe life altering injuries. Mm -hmm. The motorcycle wreck was severe. Uh, had a gymnastics coach let me fall five feet on my head. Age 19. So anyway. Um, and then I survived for 20 years, but then a car wreck took me out of the game. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I saw multiple, multiple practitioners. And that comes under the uh, heading of desperate people do desperate things. And yeah. every practitioner seems to think that they have the cat's pajamas. Mm -hmm. That what they do is the magic that you need. Mm hmm. Yeah. And I was fascinated. I saw an energy practitioner who was a master. He had a master's in nursing. And I remember her telling me, she said, oh, when you first came here, your energy was all over the place. But now it's so nicely organized. And I'm thinking, and I hurt like hell. And I came to you because I hurt like hell. And I still hurt like hell. So this energy stuff that you do doesn't impact the reason I came to see you. So I think we're done. Yeah. 
Yeah, I've seen a lot of that. Um, yeah. yeah. And what, what I love about the Hesh method is it, it is very mechanical. So there is, if the treatment is successful, you, uh, us as practitioners and the client should feel the difference. Right. It's not, it's not subjective. It's not, oh, well, we'll know in three, in three to six months. Yeah. yeah. You come, no, no. It is very definitive. You know, you know, within one to two visits, am I helping this person? Is this a part of their, their pain pattern? And I do help a lot of people with chronic pain. I've seen a lot of practitioners, spent mm -hmm. a lot of money. I see them for three visits and that's it. Although yeah. today, today I had a patient and I did not help her, mm -hmm. you know, but I did give her some direction. Yeah. But it falls outside of my expertise. And I need to be humble enough to know that rather than to say, oh, well, I'm the good guy. I got the smarts, right? So you need to come keep seeing me, which is just delusional. Yeah, I and, totally agree. I mean, it's an ethical violation to practice that way. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, and, and that's part of why I'm so grateful to know this method because I know I can be helpful to a lot of people and I know when not to even touch the person. When you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I have had one person who came in for help and I said, you need an MRI. I'm not even going to go there with you because of the pain pattern. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. And right. the history. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that, that I'm very grateful to. Um, yeah. It's easy to be decisive. And that's what people need. People need decisive care, definitive care, clear answers, not being strung out yet one more time by another, you know, another person who's enamored with their technique. Yeah, yeah. Or something that works for a few months and then they're back to square one because they've gotten some manipulation or some relaxation of muscle or something like that. And then there, you know, the pain comes back and they, they have nowhere to go except to go back again and keep doing the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Okay. Now, and, and we truly look at the whole body. We don't just say that. We do it. Yeah. You know, and, and we, and my approach has a deep understanding of how to connect the dots in the body. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I helped a man with you know, significant headaches for five years. You could see it. He was actually the husband of a woman that came to see me. And I said, well, we have a little extra time. Shall I look at your husband? She said, yeah, he's had a headache for five years. I started looking at his body. I started in his feet. I said, how long have you been wearing boots? He said, five years. I said, okay, how long have you had your headaches? Five years. His ankles and the joint below the ankles where the heel moves, that's called the subtalar joint below the talus or the talus and calcaneus make the joint talocalcaneal joint. And a lot of practitioners know how to treat the joint above that, and they don't know how to treat that one. Okay. And that joint has a reflex connection with your eyes, yeah. the position of your head and neck. And basically, he lost movement in his ankles. So he didn't need that extra movement in the upper neck, and the neck locked up neurologically. When I felt his neck, it was like cables of steel. Oh and I knew, okay, I'm not going to help these muscles by working on these muscles or these joints. Yeah. I knew that the nervous system was driving the bus and there was another reason. And that reason was loss of motion in his feet and ankles, but also in his hip joints. When I opened up motion in the hips and feet, his neck melted. A week later, he sent me an email. He said, I'm still headache free. Oh, that's so wonderful. But we teach him how to keep it. Mm -hmm. And usually it's something they do for five minutes on a Saturday. And just make sure that you keep the benefits. But honestly, the body now moves more naturally. And so every time someone walks, well, that, that reflex for him was now intact. So when he strikes his heel on the floor, that joint moves into proper rotation. His neck counter rotates the other way. So it reinforces the correction. Uh, oh, that's a good, uh, great way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. And it explains why some people, uh, well, here's a question that's not on the list. Why sure. is it that some people 
<clears throat> will um, retain a correction where other people have to treat on a regular basis. Well, because the treatment is incomplete. Okay. Um, you you know you have to understand a, a, an injury is not just a phenomenon just in your low back. For example, right. it involves a compensation somewhere mm -hmm. else in the body. But mm -hmm. I'll give you a story. My neighbor in Las Vegas, uh, whenever he would garden or do heavy lifting or such, he would have to go get a spinal adjustment. Okay. And it wouldn't fully resolve his problem, but it would give him some short-term benefits, you know. Mm -hmm. But he always lived with some discomfort, right? And so I evaluated him and I said, well, the reason your lumbar joints need to be adjusted is because the pelvis is out of balance. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason the pelvis is out of balance, and the pelvis is a big structure having an effect on a little joint. So gapping that little joint repeatedly isn't going to fix the pelvis. Okay? Right. So I told him, well, the reason your pelvis is offset or malaligned or abnormal posture and abnormal movement is because of your hip hip joint lacks some movement. So we treated the hip joint, then taught him how to keep it, taught him how to keep his pelvis balanced, and now he no longer has low back pain. If he has a setback, he knows exactly what to do. So it's a very economic approach. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had a, a massage therapist and she had spent $50,000 over the course of 30 years. Yeah. And I treated her for less than 1% of that. And I made her independent, you yeah. know, and I was treating her Atlas. She was going to for upper cervical adjustments. And the way that I treated is I treated in every plane of the body. And my approach treats it in the, uh, you know, going forward and backward. It's a mm -hmm. very interesting, very bizarre joint. Uh, but most clinicians treat only the rotation in that joint I know not why I don't know why mm -hmm. yeah so by being thorough and evaluating and treating in each uh, direction the joint moves uh, then we resolve it yeah great yeah I love these stories because it's so, it's such fulfilling work I have to say it, it's really I, one of, yeah you know there's a lot of mythologies out in the world and one of them is that Oh, I had an injury, so I have to go see somebody 12 times. Mm -hmm. Like, why? Why? When I uh, unloaded, you know, I, I ended up putting 40 bags of topsoil in my, in my back lawn to take out the, it was way too much slope in that lawn. And I thought, well, 10 bags ought to do it. Nope. T 20? Nope. 30? Nope. 40. Took 40 bags. So, yeah, I had a setback. But I knew exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I easily restored normal movement and, you know, resolved any muscle spasm that I had. Right. Um, it's, um, I don't know, I had a point I was going to make, and I, I think I lost that point. But um, well, you make, you make lots of points. <laughs> which yeah. Are, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, so the point is you make them independent where, you know, they may feel great for a year and then they may do the topsoil and, but they have tools that they know how to self-manage it at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I had recently had a client, she was fine after treatment, never treated herself for weeks and weeks and weeks, and then sat in a really, uh, strange position in a bad chair for a period of time uh -huh. it was, was all symptomatic again. And she put it off for a while and put it off. And then she thought, oh, well, maybe I should do those exercises Sophie uh, gave me. Yeah, yeah. And she said, and the pain was gone, just like yeah. that. Yeah. Sometimes the body just needs simple movement. But you know what's peculiar? Mm -hmm. I mean, I teach my clients simple movement. Sometimes my back just needs simple movement, not strengthening. Don't jump right into stabilization exercises yeah. because, listen. If your body lacks movement, even if it's subtle, in one direction, that's actually going to inhibit strength. Yeah. And you can't override that reflex with exercises. I have people come see me 
they've been getting stabilization core exercises for three months. And I show them, I said, look, your core is inhibited. Yeah. You're weak. When I twist you to the right, you can't even resist me. So, you know, 18 more months of core stabilization exercises is not the answer. It could even be detrimental, right? Yeah, yeah, because the body is not balanced. So, yes, correct. Mm -hmm. And so I find what is the greatest restriction of movement in this person's body? And it's usually less than a five-minute correction. And then I have them replicate that position. I have them show me how strong. And all of a sudden, they are much stronger because we treat the nervous system. Mm -hmm. It's not a weak muscle. It's a nervous system problem that inhibits normal muscle function, normal movement. So would you say there is a time and a place for physiotherapy and strengthening and a True. time when it's absolutely- Well, yeah. I mean, you know, if you have a, a, a surgery, then you need to recuperate and restore yeah. movement and, and restore strength, you know, to maximize your recovery. There is a place. Yeah. But I will say that a lot of people are getting a lot of exercises that's not effective or only partially effective because there's a neurological inhibition and that and and that it would be much more effective if that inhibition were treated first. Yeah, I I agree. So um can you talk about the difference between the Hesh method and chiropractic treatment? Well, I've been to at least seven different chiropractors in my life. Mm -hmm. So I have an appreciation for what the average chiropractor does. I interact with some very bright ones online. I'm in a, a group with them and we mm -hmm. put up studies and new literature and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, but it is interesting because that rib needed to have motion restored, but attempts to do a a adjustment or a manipulation just didn't work. Mm -hmm. I needed a longer force um, and a gentle force over a long period of time. So I think if we go back to the four principles that I developed, that that uh, demonstrates the difference. It's not a quick thrust. When I restore movement in a joint, it's a gentle force sustained for about two minutes. Um, mine is based on a theory of resolving the injury within three visits. Um, I think, you know, that it was always, chiropractic was always developed as a model of preventive care and repeat care. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I have a different model. Mm -hmm. Does that help? Am I missing anything? Um, I'm. I guess what I see is there's a lot of treatment of the compensating patterns that are going up the spine, but no treatment of the, or a lack of effective treatment in the, what's happening in the pelvis. Well, you know, that's true. You know, yeah. that is true. And it seems like they develop kind of a routine. I mean, if I'm wrong, tell me that. But most of my patients say, well, he does the same treatment every time. Mm -hmm. But if the problem isn't getting better, then maybe you need a different treatment. But honestly, it's really peculiar. I mean, they have their place. They help people. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. If I go trip on the sidewalk, then maybe I need manipulation three days in a row. Um, you know, I get that. But um, I see people every week who have had extensive PT, extensive chiropractic, ex extensive effort to restore normal mobility and posture in the pelvis. And they have a sacral torsion. I wrote a book chapter on that. I developed a very simple way of treating it. And it's surprising, but that profession doesn't seem to know how to resolve a sacral torsion, a, re a restricted twisting in the sacroiliac joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've seen many people who've been to chiropractors for years and years. And it's obvious to me, having doing the hash method, what, what the issue is. And I wonder too about the um, repeated treatment of a compensating pattern and the wear and tear on the joints. Because if you're, if you're chronically adjusting something that's really not the root of the problem. Driven neurologically. 
Yeah, yeah. So, because I've had chiropractic adjustments too, and and it, sometimes it's kind of frightening, <laughs> especially yeah, if they're working in the neck. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and personally, I had a vertebra in my neck that no one could get to move that was out of place. And it and when I treated myself for the side glide dysfunction, it just kind of went poop and popped back into place. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So. so everyone has subspecialties and they are specialists in some yeah. parts of the body, but not not all parts. And there are sometimes there's something that's going on in the neck that I'm not quite. Uh, then I will refer to an osteopath or, or a chiropractor if there's something that's right. kind of weird for me or they've got something going on neurologically that I don't really understand. So uh -huh. that that's when I've referred people. Yeah, they have their place, no doubt about it, and they have a high skill set. Yeah. Um, you know, um, but there are other things that can be done for a person. And because I see the chronic pain population, then I see their failures. I don't see their, you know, acute successes, right? Yeah. The people yeah. that get better right away. Um, but I see the ones that have more chronic conditions that aren't being resolved. Yeah, that's true. So I have a I have a different vantage point. Yeah, yeah, I would I would uh, say that's true for me too. Um so and the Hesh method in osteopathy, that's certainly another a very uh, a treatment that can be very effective for people. Um, how would you see the differences or similarities? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I mean, osteopathic osteopathic treatment encompasses many things. Mm -hmm. There are many, many approaches to osteopathy. So it depends on which particular system within osteopathy osteopathy you're ta talking about. Um, but let's just talk about treating joints. Yeah. Okay. Um, I made a deep, deep dive into the osteopathic literature in the 80s and 90s. Um, a good reference source is Philip Greenman's work. And, um, you know, it certainly influenced me. But what I do is I look into a system of evaluating and treating the body, particularly joints, and I look to see what's missing. Okay, and then I find a way to fulfill that. Um, I got osteopathic treatment when I had my car wreck. And um, it was interesting because his treatment of the joint below the ankle would be to move the heel left and right. Mm -hmm. That was his approach. But I found out that that's not an effective treatment for that joint, and it doesn't restore the normal motion, that you actually have to distract that by pulling it down to kind of open up the joint, and you have to treat it in rotation. And the rotation is so much more effective. I ended up treating myself. So I've looked for knowledge gaps in treatment approaches. And I read their literature and I take coursework and I look for what's missing. And then I work on developing an evaluation and a treatment for that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because people think a system is complete. That's the worst thing you should believe. Mm -hmm. If we're going to be scientific, it's not true. A lot of these methodologies were developed in the 1800s. Yeah. You know, and they had a limited knowledge of joints. Um, so that's what I do. I look for knowledge gaps in treating joints throughout the body, um, which I find very, very interesting. I've had to dig into the anatomical literature, uh, deeper than my degree, uh, did and, uh, look into the anthropology literature, even when I discovered an odd pattern in the upper neck. Oh, interesting. Oh, I'd like to hear more about that, but um. well, I have a book chapter on it. It's not it's not a complete uh, because it it's it mostly addresses the second joint in the in the upper neck. It okay. lightly touches on the first joint. So I need to write another chapter on the on the very first joint where the head connects to the first vertebrae. Uh -huh. But that book chapter is on my website. All you have to do is go to the Hesh Institute website. That's spelled H E S like Sam C H and look for the cervical book chapter. Mm -hmm. 
No of course, it's nicer to learn these things with a hands-on workshop, you know, but those are hard to come by sometimes. And, you know, mm -hmm. reading or doing the online coursework, we, we teach online courses, that is the next best option. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's been, it, it, uh, it, it, it's a great course. It's certainly, um, the one thing that I found is, is just the spring testing takes some time to uh, get proficient at. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and because bodies are so different with hypermobility and things like that, that it yeah, and it, it takes a little bit of slowing down to get the information. Yeah. And I think a lot of clinicians maybe they're like in a rush mode, like quickly I have to figure out what's wrong and then go treat it. Like wait a minute, wait a minute. You mm -hmm. have to listen to the body and let the body reveal itself to you. You know, step back a little bit and listen to the body. Let, you know, let the information come to you. You can't rush in there and get it all. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's something I learned early on is that, you know, our our model is, you know, my training, uh, you know, basically said, well, Jerry, now you're skilled and you can evaluate someone and know exactly what they need in one visit. Mm -hmm. And so then you can keep doing the same thing and, and teaching them exercise, progressing the exercise and and then and whatever other things you do. And then a month later, you get to reevaluate them. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but I summarily reject that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have to do that. You know, you're not the boss of me. I can do what I want. Uh, I will reevaluate my person every time I see them because I know this. I know that the body can't show you all of the mysteries of the injury on the first day. And when you uncover some of those on the next day, other things might reveal themselves. Whereas if you only went with what you saw yesterday, you'd be missing those things. Yes. yes. And so, even, yeah. Yeah. So reevaluation is, is an ongoing process. It's not something you do four weeks later after initiating, you know, treatment. But again, yeah. I have a different business model. I will not be wealthy. Ain't going to happen. I Mine is not come back and see me twice a week for 12 weeks. That's not it. Yeah. Mine is get in there and make a big difference and teach them how to manage it. And um, most of my cases are, you know, done within three visits. A few of them need a few more visits. But yeah. for, for the majority, they can get significant definitive care in a few visits by using a whole body paradigm and this this philosophy of care mm -hmm. yeah 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 and you mentioned an interesting point about um the body taking time and the neurological system needing to respond to the work that's been done and and so you know there's been several times on the second day i see things that weren't i wasn't obvious to me on the first day and then i especially with the population i'm working with now that are older I really find doing a follow up a couple weeks down the road. Nice. Nice. Make sure that they're doing the exercises right. Yep. Do they still need them? Yeah. Um, and and then I just say to them, you know, it'd be worth your while every month, couple of months, whatever your time and yep. your budget allows to come in for a time massage or whatever. I reevaluate, yep. make sure there's nothing that we need to address. So that's kind of how I've been. And yes. I've been seeing so, way more hash clients here and doing a lot less Thai massage, where in Canada it was almost opposite. Oh, okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. Interesting. So, Interesting. yeah. And you talked about seeing a lot of windswept pelvis. You want to just chat about that? It's, it's you know, I started to wonder, and I wanted to run this by you too. Um, I'm I'm wondering if an earlier injury possibly where there's a restriction in the, in the sacral joints or in the more upper part of the pelvis is existing. And then they have a fall because a lot of people fall here. Um, so then there's a secondary injury. And because that lower uh, ischia are more available for movement. The sit bones, yeah. Yeah, if as that fall then creates that windswept pelvis because it's the only place that the pelvis can absorb that impact. Interesting. Yeah. And, you know, it's not even in the literature. It's not in the traditional mm -hmm. approach. If, if you try to have a conversation about this with someone trained in chiropractic, osteopathy, muscle energy technique, physical therapy, they will not even know what you're talking about. Because they, 
evaluate the upper part of the pelvis, but not looking at the lower half in the way that we look at it. Oh, and it's so obvious sometimes. I mean, I had a woman with one okay. issue here and one way, like it was incredible. You know, we have a lot of faith in the system, but we don't realize the system doesn't know everything. Yeah. It's just not common knowledge. So we do know some secrets about the body and um, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. An another uh, technique that's very uh, popular down here is the bone, uh, bone therapy. And I really don't know a whole lot about that. I've, I've tried to kind of penetrate it a little bit. But yeah. perhaps you have a bit more knowledge there and you can talk about it. Not necessarily. It. Uh, if you look it up, you'll find that it's a skin rolling technique. Mm -hmm. And the skin has a nerve supply. So they're, they're always, when you work with a patient, you know, in the healing arts, in the manual arts, hands-on art, you know, you're always interacting with the nervous system. Yes. Um, and their input is through, you know, rubbing, uh, taking the skin and kind of rolling it between thumbs and fingers. And that can be effective for a number of things. Yeah. Um, but the hash model doesn't uh, necessarily use that. I will do soft tissue work at times. But my first, uh, my first effort, efforts are to find out where in the body the micro motions are lost and restore that because it's a powerful link into a part of the nervous system that, for example, the skin rolling won't access. Mm -hmm. um, mine is more of a dense, I find dense tissue restrictions, uh, more of restrictions of the, of the tiny movements in joints that are subtle. Mm -hmm. You know, bending my finger up and down is a gross movement. Okay. But I had an injury to this finger and it was the, the, the lateral and medial movement that was affected. And that's a very subtle movement. When I try and move it this way and that way, it just doesn't move a lot that way, but it does. And I, and I can find a restriction in those subtle manners and then restore it. And that can be very helpful in restoring normal uh, input into the muscles, normal strength, normal mobility and reduced pain. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I let somebody do bone on me today. I'd be thrilled. I mean, you know, because everything has a benefit. Yeah. Um, you know, um, so it certainly has value. It just can't do what Hesh Method does. And yeah. Hesh Method can't do what Bowen does. Yeah, I, I could see, what, especially around the scar tissue or fascia, yeah. oh, yeah. like that, that would be very effective. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Great. Great. Um, <clears throat> So the lack of proper movement in, in, in these subtle ways, um, can you talk about the impact that will have on disintegrating uh, or deteriorating discs, um, um, uh, stenosis, all, all of those kind of low back? Well, you know, we don't have research that tells us that it will contribute to that. Mm -hmm. I perceive stenosis as number one, for some people we know it's congenital. And for others, it's in response to degenerative changes that have occurred over a long period of time. Um, so I can't really speak to that. Um, I treat stenosis. Um, I treat symptoms of stenosis, sometimes effectively, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes people simply need to get a surgical, uh, you know, a, a surgery to increase space around the nerve roots. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's uh, not the best answer, but that's uh, what it is. Yeah, the one the one fellow that I I wouldn't touch. Um, he ended up getting ablation for uh, uh, like a bone spur that was digging into nerves. Right, so that would be something that the hash method. Right, it, it, we would help indeed. We yeah. able to fix and, that. and the beauty is, we know quickly. We know yes. very quickly, we're not helping you. If, you know, you have to go try another avenue and we try and give them direction. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, <clears throat> so what kind of uh, research would you like to see on the hash method? What's- Well, we certainly, need, we certainly need help in that arena. Yeah. You, know, you can always 
cull the literature that's existing out there and use it to support your work. But really, it would be nice to see some clinical studies on this approach to various parts of the body. You know, I had a, a 77 year old psychologist, and she limped in the door. And I was reading her history and such, and they were suggesting that she would get uh, hip surgery. And I thought, oh, my gosh, I'm not going to help this woman. But then I started moving her hip around, and I'm like, wait a minute, this hip moves in a couple of directions that it usually would not when you need a total hip replacement. Okay. But there were two directions in which it did not move. Well, what happened was for 40 years, eight hours a day, how does she earn her living? Sitting in a lazy boy chair, hips and knees bent, interviewing her clients. Oh my God. It's talk therapy. Yeah. So I treated her very gently. I treated her for less than 15 minutes to restore hip rotation, restore hip extension, and also to bring the pelvis back in better alignment with the upper and lower body. Mm, okay. And bingo, she walked out like a normal person. She brought me a couple of friends of hers to treat, and she sings my praises. Um, so I would, you know, there's a need to help the elderly people because you see them bent over a bit, and yeah. you just go, oh, oh, my gosh, if I could straighten out that hip, I could help you so much. You can't help all of them, no. but I truly think that, that research on that alone could could add so much for society mm -hmm. because a lot of what we have is uh qualitative uh uh yeah you know with client feedback and testimonials yeah yeah and i'm not a researcher per se i don't publish big studies it's not what i do mm -hmm. um, i teach i develop online courses and teach other clinicians and hope that in time someone will pick up the ball and do the research mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how would you like to see the hush method applied overall in the bodywork industry? If you had your a magic wand, what would you? Well, because it's so effective for a lot of these clients, I guess I would like it to be mainstream. That would be nice. Yeah, I, I say. I just, you know, I'm I'm a again. I'm just one person. I you know I I I'm not this maven of marketing and. Um, so I think, you know, I'd like others to pitch in and carry carry the load. I I in my opinion, the hash method should be the assessment and treatment tool for muscle and joint pain to rule out these kinds of issues and then go from there. It, you know, because in a lot of cases you can save people from surgeries and years, decades of chronic pain. So that's what I, I'd like to see every doctor, massage yeah. therapist, and yeah, know how to do this. Yeah, and I've taught several massage therapists, and they find it very valuable. We are training other practitioners. We have chiropractors that have gotten certified in my, my technique. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're making a dent, and hopefully that will, that will continue. Uh, yeah, I hope so. Because again, I'm the only one in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so I really would like to see more people know about it because a lot of people don't even know about it, um, and and uh, and and see people take it on because it is so effective. Yeah, yeah. And I think some people find it difficult to conceive that there actually could be a different system of interacting with the body, mm -hmm. um, but there is. Yeah, and who knows if enough people from very different uh, uh, bodywork therapies take it on, how that would transform into even something more uh, useful with other pieces to it, right? Like le recently, I found that it looks what looks to be like a rotation of the pelvis, um, and, but I get lateral spring on both sides of the ilia, so, and everything else is moving, but it still looks like this pelvis is rotated. So in a couple instances, I said, well, let's, are you tender in here where the psoas, you know, and we treat for a, um, 
a tight psoas and and the person sometimes will feel tension on one side relieved and now everything's nice and and even and straight and there's no more of this twisting so that's been um what one kind of thing that i thought oh this might be this might be what it is here that i'm seeing and not you know because everything else was moving um, right so, so, yeah. so you knew that 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 was not a hesh method person but more of a soft tissue approach exactly right. exactly right. and yeah. it was the mobility testing that that guided you to to that exactly yeah so very 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 it's always interesting there's always something to learn with each with a lot of different clients who present in a just a little bit more unique way than than you know the more regular treatments that we tend to do um and the other one was a woman who actually had a short leg so we went through all the hash things everything but when she would stand she would have this tension in the left side of her back that even though everything was moving fine was still there and I looked at her shoulders <clears throat> and I just put a lift like because you had talked about our other mutual client that by the yeah, way she, yeah. she she says hello and she's doing fine nice. so yeah and um so I put a little lift under the one foot and it was like that tension went away and she said oh the pain's gone that's good so there was a an instance where there actually was a need for a lift in the shoe. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I'm I'm uh uh le learning um through the process and part of what I think might be helpful for people taking up this is to have a community like you do online with the with the Pesci uh, school where you take your course where we can ask questions and interact with one another and say what do you think about this and 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 get some support because I I have to say I did find it challenging in the beginning. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and I would add to that that I'm very available. You are, yes. People can call me spontaneously. If I'm with a client, I will call you back. But yeah. I'm very help, very available to help that process. But also, um, it would be good to have smaller communities of, you know, proximal practitioners to interact with each other. That would be wonderful, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and I'm hoping to get some support and people interested down here maybe do some retreats for people who are interested in taking your course and get them turned on to it so that we can have a network here in Mexico. Cause I'm already getting um, uh, people emailing me from other parts of Mexico. Is there a hash practitioner here? I think that's what I need. Yeah, I know. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, we're getting to a number of these questions. Um, how has developing this method uh, changed your life and the life of your impact on your family? And well, you know, my son-in-law and daughter-in-law get treated from on occasion. <laughs> yeah. you know, they'll need treatment, and I treat them, and they're happy to have access to that. You know, I work on my care and every once in a while. Yeah. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> Well, I, I, I don't know how to answer that. I, I guess I find it very fulfilling work. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is very fulfilling. Yeah, yeah. And how have you found um, generally in? Uh, you said you've got a community of people, of uh, professionals, where you're sharing information back and forth. And um, generally, how has the reception been? with uh, professionals like on social media things like that well huh. I, I, I don't interact a lot with them um so i don't really have a, a group that does that with my work i mean i will post on youtube or on facebook some unique cases that I have. Okay. But there isn't a lot of deep conversation over that. 
I don't know. It's just the nature of the beast or something, but I would certainly welcome to participate in that. Mm -hmm. But it seems like any conversations that get initiated are just very short lived. Uh, maybe I'm going about it wrong. I don't know, but um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I find the same similar thing. I might make a comment on a uh, with someone who's got well, in particular, um, I can think of an example where a woman had a son who had a very um, it's it's injury that was very debilitating and she was asking for help and where should she go and she was getting a lot of different um, suggestions of course and I said well from the sounds of the injury and what you're describing it could it could be this 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 a Hesh practitioner would be able to tell you if if that were the case and she was so grateful and she said, I've never heard of any of these things before. I've taken him to so many practitioners. And I said, yeah, you need an experienced Hush practitioner. And this is where I gave, I told her where you were um, and said, you know, if you can get yourself there, it might be worthwhile for your son. Because it was one of those uh, situations that uh, was like that sweet little young man that came to you with the down syndrome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The one that couldn't walk. Yes. Oh, that is on the I, bottom of our homepage of the Hash Institute website. Yeah. Very dramatic. He's doing great. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. And and that the desperation of the mother and and all of the crap that she went through trying to get help for this kid. Yeah. I mean, it just it's it's it can be heartbreaking sometimes to see people in that much discomfort and know that they could possibly be helped if they could just get to the right person. Yeah. 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 There's a lot yeah. of need out there. Yeah. 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 Um, so what, what uh, advice do you have for beginning practitioners? Don't drink anybody's Kool-Aid. Don't assume that when you learn a system of intervention, it's just to say for the foot and ankle. Don't assume that that's completely that that's complete and thorough. Mm -hmm. Ask yourself what's missing in this approach. If a joint can move in this direction and get stuck with respect to micro movements, can it do it in the opposite? Are there other directions that aren't being considered in this model? Uh, much of what I learned was trusting my hands, and I would feel on the patient. I would do what the book or what the paradigm said. And I would still feel like these tissues aren't balanced. There must be a reason. So I would go back home and I'd read the anatomy and I'd hold the anatomy in my hand and put bones together, take bones apart and say, hey, does this one move independently? What can it do? What might it, you know, and then put those things together. Um, so it was, a, it was a deep inquiry that helped me develop this. Um, I guess that's it. Just keep digging, keep uh, being... Keep being in love with the unknown. Keep embracing the unknown. Mm -hmm. You can only learn if you ask questions. Yeah. You have to keep being curious and not think yeah. you know how it should be. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I I totally agree. Um, <clears throat> so uh, do you plan to retire at any point? I have no plans. No. Yeah. I don't have any. No. Yeah, I can't see myself retiring either. Yeah. You yeah. know, because how can I see someone walking along with their hips swaying out to the right and not help them, right? Yeah. 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 And it, it's not, it's not onerous on the body. And I guess that's one thing I'd like massage therapists to know, because I also work with massage therapists who get into pain from doing all this. Oh, yeah. Oh Crazy yeah, work. yeah. Because yeah. in Thai massage, we're not doing any of that. Exactly. Yeah, so it's a whole different way of using the body ergonomically to apply pressure, and uh, but you know, there's so many skilled massage therapists that are just have fabulous palpation skills, and and they're perfect for. Uh, when you're used practice. to putting your hands on a body for several hours a day, day yeah. in and out. You bring some skill sets to the table. And, and right. I think this work belongs in the hands of soft tissue clinicians. 
Yeah, yeah, I think so too. So, so that's part of my uh, life's work from now until whenever is to get get massage therapists excited about the Hesh method and start treating people with and helping them out. And and I think it's a wonderful adjunct to to especially as massage therapists may want to go into retirement, but they don't want to quit working. Like this is a perfect technique to to take up. That's very easy on the practitioner. I was disabled when I developed it. I had to use my body in ways that minimize stress on my body. And so a lot of these techniques came out of doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And can you talk about that uh, injury and how you managed to treat yourself? Because you had to figure this out because you weren't getting help from uh, in other ways. And which injury? Because I've had several major injuries. Well, I'm thinking of the one where um, you had to you had a downslip at one point, and you okay, had yeah. So I had a motorcycle wreck, and I developed some instability in my SI joint. Yeah. Um, and I finally figured out that it was dysfunctional in an oblique direction that's not described in the literature. Okay. So I developed a treatment for it and it helped me significantly. Now the joint has some residual ligament damage that'll always be there. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I unload 40 bags of topsoil, I get in trouble, but I can quickly get myself out, out of trouble. Yeah. So that's the good news. <clears throat> but not every injury can be rehabilitated completely, right? Um but if you can manage it, that can be very valuable. And what used to be miserable is no longer. Yeah, yeah. And and I would say for myself, um, I had a number of things. I had a right hip inflection, side glide dysfunction, left side glide dysfunction, and a downslip on that right side from what I can determine myself. And... For years, I did gymnastics as a kid, so already oh. that I'm very flexible. My joints, yeah, are yeah, here. yeah. And then yeah. in, and then I did yoga um, for, and I'm a yoga teacher for years and years and years. So I was always feeling like that right side was tight, and I was stretching it and stretching it. Where so I'm making a strain worse because I'm already shifted out to the right, right. And and so even though it felt kind of good at the time, it was actually making the whole situation worse. And I didn't realize I was doing that. So once I fix, I think part of why I have to treat, um, it's not that often, but I do probably every once in a while, um, more so here in Mexico, because the walking is a lot more challenging than in Canada. I, um, I, I think it's because I have some laxity in the joints um, because of mm, being imbalanced and, and working into that imbalance rather than um, um, treating the... <clears throat> contraction on the left side that was there so now I know that I don't stand with my hip out to the right side ever I if I'm going to stand on one leg it's going to be the hip going out to the left side so that I'm starting to stretch that constriction on the left side um and uh what's the other thing I do I don't cross my right leg over my left anymore I do if I'm going to cross my legs it's the other way because I know that side is tighter for me where the right side if 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 I sit with my leg crossed over the right I'm going to start to feel some discomfort in that right right hip at some point so well, if you ever make Denver I'd love to treat you I would love to, because I've never been spring tested. I've never had anybody do that. Yeah. 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 So I'm sure that there's a, and I was knock kneed too, as a child, uh -huh. quite a bit. Yeah. So I have a residual of that on the right knee, but not, but otherwise it's much, much better. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll see. They've, op they've opened up the borders, so perhaps it's possible. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
nice, nice, nice. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Well, yeah, just to review the spring test, it evaluates that little spring mobility. It's a small movement in a joint. Mm -hmm. And every joint should have that little tiny movement in multiple directions. Yeah. And when it's absent, then it alters the local neurologies. Then muscles are inhibited on one side and too tight on the other. Yeah. But when you open up that subtle little movement, it has a profound, profound effect. Yeah. Yeah, I used to get a um, spasm every once in a while in the right side of the the uh, low back there, especially if I was shoveling snow to one side. And that has never, ever happened again since treating for that side blood dysfunction. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Made a big difference. Um is there anything else you'd like to say, maybe to clients or anything you can think of that? Uh... Know, when to know, when, know when to say no. Yeah. I treated a very intelligent woman. She was a hospital director. And I asked her, I said, well, you know, you had X number of visits with the myofascial therapy, right? And I said, but you found out it wasn't working, right? She said, yeah. I said, well, but then you went for three more months. I said, why? And she said, well, the person kept telling me it just takes time. Mm -hmm. And um, I would run from a practitioner that believes that. Yeah. You know, in the absence of definitive lasting change, I think there might oftentimes be another approach. So be careful about who you get connected with and stay connected with. Um, ask yourself, is this really working or is this a Band-Aid? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good advice. Yeah, that's great. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jerry, again. And um, I, I have other questions that are more technical. Um, All righty. Okay. that uh maybe i can send you a list of those and uh you know a month or so down the road we can do this again and i would uh yeah i'm i'm uh just again so grateful to have found you for myself for my own um because i was in a lot of pain at one point and yeah i i really thought i was gonna have to give up thai massage and i love thai massage i forget this yeah yeah so i uh I, I when i found you on youtube i watched like a lot of clients i watched a lot of your videos i'm going and the bells are going off ding 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 because i've been seeing these patterns with my client that you're treating with my mm -hmm. clients and so uh so yeah taking your course and then fixing myself and 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 to the point anyway that i'm no longer in chronic pain uh, yeah, yeah. I I really don't have any pain at all until if my hip starts to shift back out. The my first cue for that is I'll be doing this with my neck. Oh, <laughs> yep, certainly. Yep, yeah, but it's a whole body of phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. So that's my first cue. But uh, ever since uh, ever since being able to keep myself at least symptom free, I might not be totally perfect and there might be something going on somewhere that I can't feel myself but uh, I certainly don't have any pain and and it's enabled me to I mean I've been working another 10 years since I thought I was going to have to quit yeah wow. Wow. yeah yeah so big thing all right Jerry well thank you thank you Lovely. Have you again uh, very soon all right super thanks again Jerry bye for yeah. now bye-bye <laughs>